Hi, hey, well, welcome to our uh, Creative Energies webinar on PV system mod module level data and the difference between those things. We'll cover some common alerts and common issues that homeowners uh, view on their monitoring sites and sometimes can cause some alarm and, and hopefully put that to rest. We'll cover some simple troubleshooting for homeowners. Uh, we'll briefly answer the question, what is consumption monitoring, which is separate from your, your solar production monitoring, and go over a few frequently asked questions. <clears throat> First off, uh, we'll just briefly compare different types of monitoring sites. They're all very similar. Um, they all show current production data. They show um, certain things like this this window here shows weather uh, for the day and um, all monitoring sites also keep historical data so that you can essentially compare current data with previous production data and hopefully that's useful in making usage adjustments and, and things like that. Um, what I've got here is basically a simple view of both a solar edge monitoring site uh, and in phases monitoring site, which is called Enlighten. And the difference here being solar edge uh, monitors a central inverter system, which is a standalone inverter that's uh, mounted to the side of your house. And in phases micro inverter system, which essentially incorporates several small microinverters, which are associated with each solar panel on the roof. The simple benefits of monitoring, uh, obviously becoming familiar with your, your solar system, um, knowing your production in real time, identifying any issues, um, and that's useful both for the homeowner, uh, identifying simple things that they can fix themselves and also useful for a, a technician or the contractor in order to identify what needs to be fixed and, and how, to, how to fix issues. Um, also, as I mentioned previously, you can compare current production data with previous historical data. Um, and again, that allows you to, to keep track of the functionality of the system uh, make sure things are on par with with what your contractor um, or us creative energies outlines as far as a, a production estimate um, and and also could be useful for determining any habitual usage changes that you might need to make as a homeowner um, those things would be like you know if you if you realize that your solar is not necessarily producing as much as your home consumes you could make changes like swapping your lights light bulbs to led lights um, and other energy efficient changes like that navigating the monitoring dashboard um, with both sites is fairly user-friendly um, both sites obviously give you an option for your homepage or the dashboard. With SolarEdge's site, it is named the dashboard. And again, this gives you um, a full site overview kind of at, a, at first glance. Um, this is not where you would go for, for more granular data, but this is what the homeowner would check in on every day or every week. Um, every so often in order to just make sure things are running and make sure there aren't any issues. Uh, with Enphase, they call this page the status page. And again, it just gives a quick overview of the site, um, allows you to know that your solar is producing and whether or not there are any potential issues that need attention. In the layout view, you will get a little more granular with your data. Um, you're allowed to 
view panel by panel production data in essentially real time for both sites. And by essentially real time, I mean it's it's not second to second data. Uh, I believe the Solar Edge site updates about every 15 minutes with current current data, and Enphase's site is similar, maybe uh, closer to 20 to 30 minutes for the Enphase microinverters uh, reporting cycle. But both allow you to dial in on individual panels and see what they're doing. Um, kind of for an example, the reason this would be useful is if you noticed one panel producing significantly less than a panel adjacent to it, and that's not to be expected for shading purposes, for shading reasons or anything like that, um, that could be an indicator of, of some sort of an issue with that panel. With both monitoring sites, you also have the ability to produce reports and uh, graphs like you see on the right side of the screen. Uh, Enphase uh, is slightly less um, detailed than the Solar Edge site, but, but both sites allow you to produce reports, um, create graphs that show progression of of production throughout the day. Um, obviously, as you see this bell curve here, that is a day that likely had, had perfect sun. Um, if you were to see a more jagged curve here, that would, that would likely be an indicator that it was a cloudy day. Obviously, certain hours um, and increments of an hour producing less than others. Um, and with both sites, you have the ability to create reports for the system as a whole and for individual components. Um, and additionally, with both Solar Edge and Enphase, you can dial in to the inverters themselves and see information about your uh, electrical system. You can you can check to see whether the AC electricity uh, for each line is on par with where it should be. Uh, and I won't get any more detailed there for now. But um, long story short, you have the ability to create many different reports that that could be useful both for yourself as a homeowner and especially for a technician trying to. Uh, analyze the site or identify and fix issues. And this slide will get a little bit more into comparing current data with, with historical data. Um, with Solar Edge, you can see down here it says comparative energy. And that goes on a monthly basis, um, which you can you can change the time frame month, quarter, or year. And basically, for the years that your system has been installed, you can, for instance, compare this April's production to last April's production. Um, and that's, that's useful for several different reasons, which we can certainly answer in, in the Q&A session. Um, but both sites, uh, point being, is uh, both sites have the ability to, uh, to compare current production data with data uh, that is kept essentially in this, the uh, inverter's uh, data storage. Um, Solar Edge and Enphase both keep their historical data for the life of the system. Um, so again, for many reasons that that could be useful. As far as alerts go, um, both sites will show alerts on the home page. Again, that's the dashboard with Solar Edge, or the status page with Enphase. 
and also uh, show that there is an alert in the actual alert tab on the top of the monitoring site. And those alerts can be anything from um, low production, um, low AC energy, uh, individual, individual panels that may have issues, any inverter issues that could arise, um, hardware issues within the inverter, anything that could prevent the system from working at its full capacity will show up as an alert. And with both sites, you have the ability to register yourself, or Creative Energies can certainly help, uh, register yourself with email alerts so that in the case that you are not in the habit of checking your monitoring site frequently, which again, we suggest maybe every week, um, at least every month is what we would suggest. Uh, just keeping in mind, the quicker that you identify that there is an issue, the quicker we can come out and, and fix it or help you fix it over the phone. Um, back to what I was saying about the email alert, you can set yourself up with an email alert so that if you're not frequently checking your monitoring site, you'll get an email that, that states what the alert is and hopefully some guidance on steps to get the issue fixed and minimize lost production. This slide, we will uh, kind of go over some of the common errors um, and alerts and things that homeowners see that can be a little scary. Um, a lot of times, alerts are not as severe as they sound. Um, in, in, I would say, a good majority of circumstances, alerts that are shown are, are issues that we can help you solve over the phone, um, maybe walk you through a quick uh, troubleshooting process and, and give you guidance on how to get your system back to full operation. Um, one of the main ones is, is a system that's not communicating. Um, and systems that don't communicate may or may not still be producing energy. Um, the first thing to do is, is check your internet connection and making sure that the, the internet to your home's router is still active. That's step one. Um, then you would want to check your, your monitoring device for proper operation. Uh, Solar Edge uses what we call a, a Solar Edge monitoring gateway, which is essentially a small white antenna box that generally um, it lives right next to your internet router. Um, Enphase utilizes a device called the Envoy, which general, generally connects to your, your Wi-Fi uh, wirelessly. Um, in some cases, they can be hardwired to your internet router as well. Um, if you have questions on what configuration you have, uh, we can certainly guide you to, to finding the answer. Um, most importantly, making sure the device, whether it's the Envoy or the Solar Edge Gateway, uh, making sure that device was not unplugged. Um, when we install the monitoring device, we go through a process of, of identifying a location in your house that will be effective and should be effective long, long term. Um, so it's always best to keep the monitoring device in the location where it was originally installed. And that's especially true when you're utilizing a Wi-Fi connection, as is the case with the Envoy. Um, and it's worth noting that a lot of newer Solar Edge systems uh, now utilize a cellular connection, which essentially is installed in the inverter and gives you 12 years of uninterrupted cellular connectivity for your monitoring. Um, and those generally don't show any issues. Uh, they, they generally are trouble free, maintenance free for the long run. Um, so if you, if you are having issues with internet connectivity for your monitoring, it's likely that you either have a solar edge gateway or an in phase envoy. Uh, one of the other big ones is a panel 
that's not communicating or producing. Um, and that said, it's also possible for the system as a whole to stop producing power. Um, first thing to do would be to contact us, Creative Energies, for help with, with troubleshooting and identifying the issue. The optimizers, which are incorporated in solar edge systems, are devices that are associated with each individual solar panel. And that's the same with the in-phase microinverters. Like I said earlier, those are associated with each solar panel. One panel has one of those devices. Uh, those can often be replaced under warranty. Um, we can identify if there is an issue with those and generally get the warranty initiated over the phone. So if there is an issue with an in-phase microinverter or a solar edge optimizer, uh, it's usually a pretty quick process to get that warrantied and replaced. Obviously the manufacturer's warranty differs between equipment. Um, the solar edge system carries a bit shorter warranty than the in-phase uh, microinverters do. Microinverters uh, are warrantied for a period of 25 years. Um, but again, check with our, our service team and, and check with the warranty information that came with your product just to confirm that, that warranty period. But you know, if your solar system is relatively new, especially, all of your equipment should be under warranty. Uh, another thing that is probably most common uh, when you see a system that's not producing power, if we've checked the communication and communication is good and the system is reporting, but it is reporting zero power, um, it could be a few things. Obviously breakers can trip for a multitude of reasons. Fuses tend to blow. And obviously snow is an issue, especially here in Salt Lake City. Um, if any of those things happen, breakers tripping, fuses blowing, um, periods of, of very low sunlight or, or snow, uh, the system will stop producing power temporarily. In the case of weather-related uh, production loss, obviously that will, that will correct itself. Um, it's to be expected that systems become blanketed in snow and essentially go dormant for a period of time. Um, breakers and fuses would require us to send an electrician to, to replace a fuse or determine why a breaker is tripping. Uh, but again, they're easy problems to fix. And one call to us, um, we can generally fix that with a, um, either a phone call or a short trip to, to replace a fuse. Again, Generally, there's a pretty easy explanation and an easy fix for, for these issues. Um, but please call our, our service department specifically, and there'll be contact information at the end of the slide, uh, excuse me, at the end of the presentation, um, and we can provide any guidance that we can and make sure we get the problem resolved. And I'm gonna hand it over to Tom now. He's uh, one of our, our technical sales people and uh, our company's uh, solar policy advocate. Um, he does great work and he's gonna go through a few things with you. Uh, thank you very much. And again, there's contact information for our service team at the end of the presentation and, and please use it whenever you have questions. Thank you. Thanks, Kellen. Um, very, very good and useful information. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tom Mills, and I am going to be talking about how to use your monitoring system to analyze your power bill. Uh, this is one of the common questions we get where people are trying to, to figure out how to interpret their bill versus what their solar is producing. 
Um, and as Kellen mentioned earlier, basically every solar array we sell comes with uh, production monitoring, right? So you can just monitor what the, the, the system is producing. Um, and he mentioned the word uh, consumption. Well, right now we're focusing on just production and that can lead to some confusion because people don't see all the numbers that are represented in their, in their solar array. So we're looking at a typical electric bill here from our bigger monopoly power company in the state. And as you can see, we're gonna focus on a couple of numbers. Um, we see a billing cycle from April 10th to May 11th. We see that uh, they used 601 kilowatt hours from the grid. However, they're showing a credit here of minus 940. So that's coming from uh, previous production, right? So he's got a credit here coming. And then you see, all right, we're gonna take the difference from the 601, 940, and we're gonna see that he still has a credit of 339 what a kilowatt hours. What a lot of people focus on is right here. Right, most folks, as long as they, if they, they, if they were shooting for a hundred percent offset, in other words, the solar is producing the same amount of energy that they use in one year, then basically they're they're seeing uh, an electric bill for just their connection fee with a few miscellaneous taxes and and charge like you see here, this single phase charge, which is the type of service you have coming into your home. But what's missing is what your house consumed from the solar during the day and what the solar produced for the total of that month. So to figure that out, remember these numbers here, the 601, 940, 339, and we're, we're gonna take a look at that. The first step you have to do in order to, to get a, an accurate analysis as far as what your system produced for that billing cycle is make sure that when you look at that month production, you match that billing cycle. And uh, there's a way to do this. This is a solar edge monitoring website. I'm focusing on, on just that for now. But basically what I did for this particular client was I ran a report by going to billing cycle, scrolling down to where it says rolling days range. And then I matched as you can see, 511 here, 511 here, and that is uh, what we saw on his bill. Basically, whatever Rocky Mountain Power said, right, I'm sorry, whatever Monopoly Power Company said right here, um, we're matching those dates. So now I'm going to see what the system produced compared to his billing cycle. So, for that month, the system produced, you see here, 1.53 megawatt hours, right? And, and we're, that's just a decimal system where if we translate that to what you're used to reading on your bill, which is kilowatt hours, the system produced 1,530 kilowatt hours for that month, right? And then we saw on his bill that uh, solar produced a minus exported, right? So the system produced 1,500. The bill showed he was credited 940. If we subtract those two, we come up with this 590 kilowatt hours. This represents what you don't see with just production monitoring. In other words, during the day, while that solar was producing, some of that solar was being consumed directly from the house. And that's what this 590 represents. So we got that by looking at what, what the bill said he was credited for kilowatt hours versus what the system produced. Now you know your house used 590 of those kilowatt hours for the month. And that means he, had, uh, he pulled 601 kilowatt hours from the grid, right? And that's because solar's not producing at night. Um, so th that the house has to be powered somehow and it's pulling kilowatt hours from the grid. Then if we take 590, what the house consumed during the day, plus 601, what it consumed from the grid, we come up with a 1,191 total kilowatt hours used for the month. That is, in all reality, 
what the house used total between the solar and the grid, between day and night. Now, if we looked at the, the 601, which is what was pulled from the grid, minus what was credited, it means he still has, this client still has 339 kilowatt hours that can be carried over to the following month. So that is a way for you to take advantage of your, your uh, monitoring system so you can analyze your bill. If you wanted to avoid all of this, if you wanted to avoid all of this math, then you would opt in for an additional feature, which is um, the consumption monitoring. And the consumption monitoring will show you exactly what the house used during the day, right? This 590 for those, the, that number of billing cycle days in that month. Um, and it'll show you what the system produced overall, and it'll show you what, what was pulled from the grid at night. So all of this can be avoided if you go with um, what we call more full monitoring. You get consumption and production. That is an additional cost. For the average household, it's about $380, but that does depend on how your uh, electrical work is configured in the house. In other words, not all electricians are equal. Some do a really nice job and we see a really clean electrical installation and it's very easy for us to adapt onto that electrical so you can see this kind of detailed monitoring where others, the, the electrical work requires our electricians to go in and clean it up and that, and that can be an added cost. Um, but that, that's essentially, uh, how you can use monitoring to look at your bill and figure out what is going on. So you heard me mention consumption monitoring, and I am going to allow my colleague Graham to dig into this. Graham does a lot of our uh, design work. He figures out how the, the solar is actually gonna be connected to the house and the best way to go about that. So with that being said, I am going to turn this over to Graham and he can talk more about uh, consumption monitoring. Graham? All right, thanks, Tom. Uh, thanks, Kellen. Uh, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, of a third party monitoring system um, called eGauge. eGauge is an energy monitoring system consisting of an energy meter, data logger, and current transformer, uh, which in combination provides energy usage data to the end user through an online interface. Um, now, unlike uh, some of the monitoring that we've discussed earlier, uh, E-gauge is, is separate from any solar inverter, so um, because of that, uh, it is extremely versatile uh, and it can accommodate a wide variety of installation locations. It can be used uh, for residential, electrical services, commercial or industrial, and on single split phase or three phase AC systems. Uh, the principles... Hey, Graham, uh, can I time you out for a second? Yeah. Um, right now, we're seeing your entire screen and not the, uh, or is that how it's supposed to look? I'm sorry. Oh, okay, that's your slide. My, my apologies. Ke Kelly can just edit that out. Okay, uh, so um, eGauge is an extremely versatile and can accommodate a wide variety of installation locations. Uh, it can be used residentially, commercially, and industrially, single phase, split phase, and three phase AC systems. The principles are generally the same, but this segment is geared more towards commercial applications. So I'm just gonna take a short time to discuss and cycle through uh, some images to give you an idea of the capabilities um, that eGauge has. So uh, you might be thinking, well, there's already a utility meter on the side of the building and the energy usage shows up on the bill each month for my electrical utility provider. How is energy monitoring system helpful? 
So while you do have some energy usage data available through your utility bill, you don't necessarily have a great idea of when exactly that energy was used, how much power was used at any given time, or what loads consume that power. Having this level of detail can be extremely valuable. And here's a simple um, display of building energy usage. Um, you can see here, this is sort of your typical home screen um, when you're looking on your online user interface for eGage. Um, across the top here, you have a selection of different time frames for which to view your data. Showing your power usage throughout the course of the day. This is just a five day window um, in May. A little summary of energy generation and usage. And over here in the bottom right, uh, you have the ability to select different um, registers, and that can alter the view um, in your uh, graph. On the right hand sidebar here, um, that will would track real time uh, energy usage and production if you have a parallel generation system. So, um, a single e-gauge meter has 15 or 30 inputs, depending on the model, and multiple meters can be installed if necessary. This is a pretty typical e-gauge installation. Um, the device usually is installed near the building's utility service um, in order to access the various circuits that are being measured. And this particular model is an e-gauge core, excuse me, an e-gauge pro model. So you can see down along the bottom here, there are 30 inputs. Um, so each of these inputs here uh, lead to a current transformer or CT that are measuring uh, the electrical conductors. Um, there is a pro, or excuse me, a, a core model that just has 15 uh, inputs. Uh, you can also install more than one e-gauge at a site. Um, electrical wires coming in on the left to provide the device power um, as well as voltage readings. And then your typical internet uh, connection to allow for the data logger to um, send the information it collects from the site to um, uh, your online user interface. Um, so individual loads uh, such as uh, lighting, HVAC equipment, and motors um, can all be tracked and, and this is just really particularly useful uh, in order to help identify usage profiles. Um, you can really uh, get granular with the information you're collecting. Um, helps you to determine, you know, are the lights being left on in a building? Is the thermostat programmed correctly? Is the equipment functioning normally? Um, so here's a, um, the same system that we saw earlier um, and along the top here in gray that is the total um, energy being used by the building then you can see i've selected uh, the various different meters that we um, are also tracking uh, separate from the aggregate building usage um, and those are appearing color coordinated uh, here um, in the graph um, each meter tracked independently. Um, so looking at these, you know, you can see some meters are using more power than others and, and that power is being used at different times. So, um, you know, an example of, of uh, using this resource to identify potential um, issues with the electrical system or, or some of the appliances maybe that are using that power, this next slide here, is just a zoomed in um, to a couple days. Uh, here's the last slide. So we're just zoomed in a few days and we've eliminated some of the registers. Um, so we're now we're just looking at, at meter A and, and I've chosen meter A because we're looking at gray um, 
line along the top for total energy usage um, for the entire building. And meter A, meter A seems to be contributing um, to a significant portion of that usage. And um, beyond that, uh, you know, we see our timeline here of 12 p.m. Um, and the 12 hours um, each day. Uh, there's a significant bit of energy usage here. Um, and we might want to figure out why that chunk of, um, of energy is, is is there you know it's if it's a business and operates during normal business hours what's contributing to this uh this continuous energy usage um, when you might expect that maybe everyone's gone home for the day um you're not using some of the equipment on site etc cetera, etc cetera. so um can be extremely useful for uh just kind of tracking and improving building efficiency. Uh, another benefit uh, that eGauge can provide with its ability to measure multiple circuits is submetering. Um, oops, here's just a view of um, some submetering. So this is a different site. Um, in this site, uh, we're seeing solar generation um, in, in uh, that is exported to utility in green here. Um, the red uh, illustrates grid usage from the utility grid, and then I've got a variety of registers selected along the bottom um, that are just different uh, suites. So um, this particular building, you know, there are several uh, suites, um, multiple offices. Submetering can be used. Uh, you know, to track tenant meters, sub panels, or multifamily buildings. Um, so here is a close up of that same building. We're just now looking at a day, so you can really get in. You, you know, you can even dive into a 10 minute view um, to really get into to seeing when any of these various loads being metered are, um, you know, when they're using energy and, uh, and, and potentially what. Uh, load is consuming that power. So uh, here's an even closer view. Um, as you can see, we're really, you know, diving into some granularity. And again, over here on the right, the sidebar showing that instantaneous uh, power usage by all of the circuits that are being metered. Um, if you have a solar system, um, of course, the e gauge can be used to record energy generation, uh, which allows for the user to track the system's health and performance. That is extremely beneficial to reduce system downtime. And if there is an issue uh, to assist with the operations and maintenance of the system. Um, so here, this particular slide um, is just showing a uh, sort of a small uh, commercial ground mount system. Um, here's a, a weekly snapshot of energy production. Uh, and I've selected a single inverter uh, here in magenta, uh, inverter number five. And can just track and look uh, here, you know, some clouds, but on some of these nice days, just a really nice curve. Um, and that just at first glance suggests that, hey, that inverter is operating normally uh, and everything is working well. There are um, multiple inverters on this site, as you can see. Um, so uh, I can look at any one of the 10 inverters, um, compare them to one another, um, and help to diagnose issues and uh, assess the system performance. Um, a lot of times uh, the revenue grade accuracy, which eGauge can provide, um, is, is required for SREX, Solar Renewable Energy Certificates, and, and that through that program that might require revenue grade accuracy. Um, so there, there's a reason um, eGauge might be selected um, 
as the monitoring system because it can provide that that degree of accuracy required. Um, uh, revenue grade accuracy can also be required sometimes if financing is involved, uh, just to um, track uh, power generation or usage um, in an extremely accurate manner. Uh, let's see here. So moving along to the next slide. Um, if you have a solar PV system, um, and here's where we're kind of circling back to the more discussion on consumption monitoring um, and touching on some of what Tom was discussing earlier, uh, your utility bill probably only shows the energy grid, uh, or sorry, the grid energy you've used and the solar energy you have exported to the grid for credit, but not how much solar energy the site has consumed. Um, you're, you've kind of got your kilowatt hours delivered from the utility, kilowatt hours exported from the util, uh, from your solar system to the utility grid um, on your utility bill, but you don't know when exactly that energy and power was produced and consumed on the site. And uh, eGauge can be configured to provide this data, and it's really helpful to maximize self-consumption um, so you can use more of the renewable energy on site. Um, it can change your, your usage habits um, and, uh, and increase that, uh, that self-consumption. Uh, eGauge is a great tool, well, all monitoring in general, but eGauge um, as well, too, uh, can be used to promote energy awareness. Um, lots of our clients have chosen to set up kiosk views in, the, um, you know, in their lobbies or conference rooms. Um, so they're there'll be a screen sitting, you know, mounted on the wall uh, that just tracks um, the building's energy usage and kind of helps promote uh, energy awareness and efficiency uh, for the building. And, and um, some of the different points that can be tracked to uh, use in energy load analysis um, are peak demand, power factor, phantom or ghost loads and, and base load. Um, so uh, the reason uh, identifying these trends can be really helpful um, is that oftentimes uh, utility rate structures are such that uh, you can pay more, you, you, you will be subject to an increased uh, fee if your peak demand exceeds a certain threshold. Uh, so EH monitoring can help identify when that uh, peak demand happened and uh, you have the ability to adjust your, um, maybe adjust your operation uh, to decrease that peak demand and realize uh, uh, financial savings there. Uh, the same thing with base load. Um, you know, here's an example of a, a, a small commercial system. Um, orange being the solar generation um, exported to the utility grid. Um, down below here, uh, solar generation used on site. So that's that self consumption I mentioned. And then the gray here is uh, utility um, grid usage. So you can just kind of track here along um, and figure that there's about 260, 280 kilowatts of base load at all times at this building. And so um, potentially there are some measures that could be taken to reduce that um, base load and, and, and reduce the utility bill um, and improve the, uh, the solar as well too. Um, I mentioned the phantom and ghost loads. Um, I sort of mentioned, uh, discussed that a little bit earlier in a slide. Um, those loads where you just aren't quite sure where that um, power and energy is being used. And then power factor too um, is, a, is useful to know uh, so that, uh, you know, a lot of times the building has to be within a certain threshold of power factor um, uh, for the utility to provide um, quality power to that building. So since each of these elements that I've just briefly gone over 
can impact energy efficiency, if issues or trends are identified, then corrective measures can be taken to realize an environmental and financial benefit. So um, this, uh, all these monitoring systems uh, really help to uh, provide insight into both energy usage and um, in our case, solar energy production. Um, you can really spend a significant bit of time dialing in and um, can pull a lot of, uh, of, of good data and detail um, from these systems. And that's uh, why they're so important. Um, here's back to my original home slide, just showing sort of a, a variety of different uh, installations and um, you know, screenshots there. If you have uh, questions uh, for our monitoring team, please, as Kellen uh, mentioned, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we're happy to help. Um, whether you have a system that we installed or, uh, or the system was installed by someone else, um, we'd love to help you out with any questions you have. Here are some resources uh, for solar edge monitoring, my Enlighten. Uh, eGage can just be found at eGage.com um, or of course Creative Energy Solar um, is our website. More information available there. Uh, with that, I'm going to end my segment on eGage monitoring and um, thanks for tuning in. Um, we uh, look forward to talking more with you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, please go ahead and contact us. You saw some contact info on the end there. Also. I look for it on our YouTube page and I will have the contact information uh, for Kellen, Tom and Graham there as well. So thank you very much. I hope you all enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.